Hi, in this video we're going to show you how you can use Kotus framework to create this web page or web interface. So basically the idea is that you can create web interfaces and web pages using Kotus framework in no time. So let me zoom out a little bit on this page that we're going to create. So basically what we have is like a top navigation over here, a hero section, a three column feature section, another fe feature section that represents an image, then another one, and then we have a gallery over here, a kind of like an action over here to contact us and a footer. So if I get back to the point where it was with the current scale or the original scale, you can see how the page looks like this, which is kind of like a professional look and feel. And we are building this really, really quickly using Kotus framework. So if I go to the website of Kotus, you can see actually how the framework works. So basically you design a theme or a bunch of themes for that matter. Then you select the components that you like, and then you run the Kotus framework and copy or export the themes and components. So the way you do that, you log in, you sign up to kotus.com, you log in, a pre the project gets created for you. In this case, if I go under projects, you can see that there's a project here. I just went ahead and changed the name to the int introduction project. And the way you basically, I'm not gonna go through the how you set up the framework. It's actually pretty easy. If you go under the documentation, there is a documentation here. So you basically download it from our GitHub page then you do yarn or npm install, then uh, ultimately you do yarn run gulp or npm run gulp to open the browser, which will be refreshing the browser on any change on the framework that you do. So as I said, if we look at uh, the web page that we're gonna build, you can see we have a bunch of themes here. So there's one over here, which has like a white background and you know, a black foreground and the primary colors which are, which is the color that gets applied to the highlighted items and buttons and links it's kind of like a violet we have another one over here we have a dark violet or dark blue one and then we have a gray one and then we have a dark gray footer so the way you create the themes is you go to the Kotus framework or Kotus UI framework section and under themes and colors, you can see that if I open the theme editor, you kind of get an idea of what the background color and the foreground color are, the primary color, secondary color. But the purpose of this uh, video, I'm just uh, showing you how uh, the themes are created. As you can see, I have created a bunch of themes over here by creating. So if I go ahead and create a new theme, let's call it just, you know, introduction and I save it, you can go ahead and use this color picker to change the kind of background and the foreground that you need. Let's say, for example, this is your foreground color, which is not the best color, but obviously, you know, you can, you can play with it and get the best out of it. You can also see the preview uh, on how your theme works with a bunch of components or sample components uh, and the way the page will look like ultimately. So, for now, uh, just have this in mind and save it. So be logged in and save it to the project. I'm just going to go back. The next step is basically going through the components either by, you know, looking at how they look, uh, you know, just searching for what you expect or just, you know, browse through this list of categories depending on what you need. So I've already went ahead and saved a bunch of components that I want for my page by clicking, if you hover on these components here, there's this icon here you can press and it will save it. So if I go under save, you can see I have saved eight components representing this page that I'm going to build. So the next step is basically go through those components. So first and foremost, we have a top navigation item, then we have a hero, then we have a bunch of feature sections and a footer. So I'm going to the top navigation border item. You can see how it looks in the sort of the component view. Uh, there are different versions of this as well. If you want to center them or you want to put it on the right, depending on what you need. And also just to point out, there is like a button here for the short keys. You can see how we have put the important classes and important color variables that you might often use in your projects. So now, 
uh, in order to use this component in the framework, what you do, you just press on this view code. You can see there is an HTML section. You copy this HTML section, going back to your uh, to the framework. And the, really the main important structure here, or the folder you need to care, is SRC folder. And you can see under the SRC, you have fonts, JS, and SCSS. So under SCSS, what you need to do is to create a new folder called components. And then under the components, uh, you need to paste the SCSS of any component that you need to use. For example, in this case, we don't have any SCSS, it's just simply HTML. So I copy the HTML, I go back here, and under index.html, I will paste my content in the body. So the moment I save it, going back to the framework in the component section, I just do yarn run gulp or you can do npm depending on what package manager you use so it's going to compile a bunch of stuff and it will open the browser for you now here showing the top navigation that we wanted to but if you notice here what we have is our kind of content is kind of centered uh, in the container that is centered in the page and it, again if you go back here I just told you that if you press on this, you kind of get these important classes. The first one is a container element centered on the page. So I will copy this. I go back to my uh, index.html in the framework. I'm just going to create a div with that class and I will copy everything that I pasted from that component on this. So now if I go back here, on the canvas, you can, it. you can see that it's kind of centered in the page. And that's exactly what I want. The next thing I want to copy is this hero. So going back here, going back to my saved section. So if I go back to the saved here, you can see that I have this hero section over here. So if I copy this, I see view code here and then copy the HTML. Again, this is kind of centered in the page. So I'm going to use that CDT container utility class. So going back here, under the previous section that I created, I do CDT container. And then what I do, I paste the code of my hero. So now if I go back to my canvas, you can see that it already applied all these styles uh, into this component that we have over here. So going back here, the next step is these three columns. So if I go into my saved components again, you can see that I have it uh, under, it's called feature uh, version six. So again, I go to view code, I copy the HTML. Again, it is kind of centered in the page in the container. So again, I'm going to create a CDT container or I'm gonna use the CDT container, paste that content over here. Now, if you look at this, the way it looks is like this. It's not exactly like that. The reason is this feature has an SCSS kind of styles as well that I need to copy. And the way I do that, if you go under SCSS, there is a file uh, kind of name suggestion. So if I copy this, going back to my framework, under SCSS and components folder that I created, I do a new file and I paste that. And then inside that, I just copy the SCSS and paste it over here, save. And the moment I see the, uh, I save it, you can see that it already gets applied over here. The next one is this feature section, as you can see over here, and it has an image as well. So I basically went ahead and copied all the images under the public folder that gets created when you do yarn run gulp. So under this, under assets, I created an images folder and pasted all the images that I need for my project. So going back here, under the feature six, well, not feature six, if I go back to the save uh, and then find that one, which is here, feature. Now I just go ahead in the view code and copy the HTML. And again, if you look at here, you can see that the component itself spans over the whole width of the page, but the actual content of it is centered. And it's a very easy thing to do. So if I go back to my page under index.html, under the last section that I created, if I paste this, now what I can do, 
uh, I want to have that full width. So I get all the contents within this feature and then I just do CDT container inside this and then paste the whole content over here. Now if I go back to my layout, you can see that it kind of got centered, but obviously I need to change the path of the image that I have over here to represent this structure. So it's a sta uh, assets instead of static. So I just do assets and then I save it going back and you can see that the image gets here as well. But this component as the one on top has an SCSS part as well. So I go to SCSS, I copy the file name suggestion, going back to my code, under the SRC, SCSS components, I create a new file, paste that over here, and then I go ahead here, copy SCSS and paste it over here and save. Now if you go and look at it, you can see that now we have our beautiful feature over here. And the rest is pretty much exactly the same. So you just need to copy and paste uh, the SCSS and copy the HTML or if there is a JS under JS components. So the next one is like this. I went ahead and used this one uh, instead. If I show you this feature, so I'm just going here. Uh, I can see how it looks. I view the code. It has again HTML and SCSS. I copy the HTML. I go back to my code, going under index.html here, I paste it. Again, I take everything inside it because I want it to be in that kind of centered container. I just paste it over here and then I go with the SCSS. I have a file suggestion here. I copy that, going back under components, new file, paste it. And then I copy the whole SCSS and paste it over here. Now, if I go back to my canvas, you can see that you have this guy as well uh, under here. You can see that none of the themes are applied here, but I'm going to show you how we need to do that. The next one is this gallery. So going back under my saved, the components that I saved, I have this gallery over here. So I copy this. You can see how it generally looks over here. I do view code. Again, copy the HTML. Going back to my code under index.html and I copy it over here. Again, I want it to be centered, so I copy everything inside this section of this feature. I do CDT container, and then I just paste that over here. And then it obviously has an SCSS as well, so I copy the SCSS. I go under components, new file, paste that, going here, copy the SCSS, and I paste that SCSS. And if I go back under here, you can see that now the components are, uh, this component is there, the image kind of path needs to be updated. So I just go here, they are all static. I just need to change them to assets, right? And now you can see that it automatically refreshes and it shows the gallery over here. The next thing we have here is this lorem ipsum dollar sit amet, this kind of contact us for, and obviously you can go ahead and change these texts if you like, right? Obviously to, for your project. So going back again, under here I have used this one, this feature instead that I like a lot. Uh, I view the code, I copy the HTML, going back to my editor here under index, I paste this, and then again I copy everything inside it. I want it to be in that center container, so I just paste it over here, save it, go into the SCSS section, copy the feature name here, make sure that we copy from here, and then under the components, new file, I paste the name here, and I copy the SCSS and paste it into that file. And now, obviously, if you go to the canvas that we've made, you can see that it already sits over here and don't worry we're gonna fix the sort of paddings and margins over here with some utility classes that we have uh, again if you go back to here you can see if you open this you can see all the utility kind of classes that you need so for example if you want to add a margin or a padding depending on how big or small you want that padding you can also set them up as well and then finally, the next component that we want to use is the footer component, which happens to be the same footer that we use on Kotus.com. So if I view the code, I copy the HTML, I go to my code under index, and then I paste it down here. So now 
Our layout is almost ready. If I show you, it's pretty much like a navigation, a hero, these features over here that we have. And now it's time to apply the theme or themes that we have created, which gives the colors that we have in the original template. So in order to do that, I'm going back to the themes and colors. I go to open theme editor. I view the code. So this is basically the code to all the themes that we have created. And you can see there are a bunch of CSS variables that gets applied. So I copy the code. Going back here, what I can do is under SCSS, you have these globals as well. So under globals, in the globals SCSS, I just paste that theme that I created over here. And now it's as easy as going on the sections that I want to apply these themes. So for example, here we have this kind of violet uh, background with this primary color, which I, if I go to the editor, you can see that I created a theme called violet. So the only thing I need to do is find that um, sort of element, which happens to be this element, a uh, feature we want, and then I add a data theme equals to violet. So the name of the theme. Now if I go back here, you can see that that a specific one got the theme that I um, wanted it to have. The next one, which is like, I guess what we called it here is dark violet. Uh, is for the second or the next one on the list. So I'm going here, I found the next one, and I do data theme, and then I call it dark violet. And the same goes for the other ones. So what I need to do is, what I need to do is find the feature here, and I do data theme, and then I do dark violet, as easy as that. And then finally, you can see that it automatically gets applied. I have the gray theme that gets applied to this gallery over here. So I scroll down, I find the gallery one, and I just do data theme, gray. And then ultimately I have a footer BG uh, theme that I will get, uh, get, get it applied to here on the footer. So I call um, footer BG, and that's the name of the theme that we have over here. Now you can see that all the themes that I want got applied, but now you can see that the borders uh, or basically the paddings are kind of different than the original one. And now we have uh, sort of utility classes for them. So what I can do, I can go here, I can find that uh, sort of section and I can just simply add CDT padding XX LG, which represents a big padding. So if I go back to my page, you can see that now this will have this padding that I like. And next goes the same, gets applied with this CDT padding uh, class. I can use it for the next one. So I just add that here as the class. And you can see it automatically gets applied here. I want it to be here as well under the gallery. So if I go to my gallery, I add the same class, and then I want to do it for the feature four as well. So now you can see that all the paddings get applied pretty well. And now we have the page that we wanted in almost no time. Imagine that you had to build this from the scratch, right? You could use these components. And obviously, as you can see here, everything is responsive as well. So here you can see that on the mobile version, uh, it will somehow look and feel like this. You can also say that the paddings were too high on the desktop was good, but on the mobile, it doesn't look really good. And the way you handle it is just basically on those ones that you want the padding to change. So for example, the one that I applied the data theme, I can just add like CDT padding. Maybe I want a large padding, but on the mobile. Right. So now if I save it, you can see that it automatically changes the padding from XX large to large on the mobile. So maybe that's good. Maybe that's exactly what you want. Maybe it's not exactly what you want. But the whole idea is that you can use these utility classes to apply 
so that you can have enough paddings and margins. And the way you find them, you go inside the components, just open any component. There is this button over here, and you can see all this one. So for example, what I used was this one, CDT padding, and then the size can be extra large, 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 you know, um, and then medium, and then extra small. There you go. Uh, I hope you enjoyed this. Uh, please let us know if you have any feedbacks and we will 